So, your brand new DDR5 that you got is running really hot and causing you to crash in games or even limit your overclocking ability. Let's see how low we can get these temperatures with a couple of mods. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here and today I will be modding my DDR5 by removing the heat spreaders on it. Why am I doing this? Now, as a lot of people know, I'm always trying to get the maximum performance out of my system. When you're trying to maximize your performance, whether it be your graphics card, your CPU, even your RAM, temperatures are a very massive issue and they come into play limiting your performance at times. DDR5 is definitely very temperature sensitive. So I'm using the brand new Hynix 8i. It is the fastest DDR5 out right now at the time of filming and performs the best. So I'm actually having some issues running very tight timings and I have come to the conclusion that it is based off of my temperatures. The reason I say this is because a lot of people are having very similar timings that I'm trying to get to, same voltages, and the only difference is the temperature. My RAM sticks are running at about 55 degrees Celsius while others are running at about 45 Celsius, so 10 degrees. So today we're going to be testing with some timings and seeing how low are the temperatures that we can get. Now the RAM 6 we'll be using are my Trident Z5 RGBs. These are the 6600 CL34 kits. These are Hynix 8i. You can tell by if you look at the back, I'll circle it, you will see the 820A. A stands for 8i. If you have an M, I believe that stands for m -Di. I do not know what the Samsung or Micron codes are, but all brand new Hynix 64 and up kits that you get typically will be 8i at this time. The rest of the parts they are a 13900K and a Z690 Dark running the 2.06 BIOS. One thing I would recommend, especially for overclockers or even people who have DDR5 and are looking for, you know, more performance or maybe they're having issues running their really fast RAM on their motherboard, definitely look and see if you have a BIOS update available. So for example, this 2.8 BIOS was just released 32 minutes ago at the time of filming so definitely going to flash this later and it even says as you can see it will say improves memory stability so this means you can possibly get faster memory overclocks or let's say that you have maybe a 7800 megahertz ram kit if it wasn't working before it might work now zero problems so for testing we are just going to run these sticks just how they are with standard case airflow with the panel closed just to get typical gaming performance I will be running fans at maximum speeds because I do feel like most people who will be doing this would run typically a little higher speeds than most people. Then we will be switching to a Corsair RAM fan. This is with a knock to a cooler. I will leave a link down below to a RAM cooler that I recommend in case you guys are interested in seeing how much just putting it direct airflow on it improves the temperatures. Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the heat spreaders fully and seeing how much performance this gets you. We're also going to be seeing, is it worth it? It's just a fan, all you need. So we're just gonna go through there, see how much each different tier changes the temperatures and if which one is worth it. But let's get into it, starting with the standard, just typical heat spreaders. Also, I will be running the 1.45 volt 7800CL36 kit XMP. So that is the 7800 XMP kit you can get from G Skill. I just copied the timings over. They've run flawlessly on this kit and we're gonna see how it is. I'll leave a link down below to the 7800 kit, but I would not recommend it if you have four dims in your motherboard. Recommend maybe like a 7600 kit. I'll leave a link down below to some recommended kits, affiliate links though on Amazon. So you're supporting me with purchasing from there and seeing what kind of kits you may like and see how they perform in your rig. Here we are in Windows and as you can see 7800 CL36. These are the timings, pretty auto timings. I think the only thing said actually is TRRDS and TRRDL, aside from the primaries. And as you can see here, the temperatures will be monitoring with hardware info, running TM5 D1 Usmus. This is the config I'm using. We're just gonna be running three cycles. It's about 10, 15 minutes, seeing what the temperatures are. So I will come back when this is finished. So at the time of filming with the heat spreaders off, we are running 69 Fahrenheit in the room. I'll put it up for Celsius for the rest of the world, but that is what the temperature is. If the temperature does change, 
between times of filming, I will be posting that as well and give you guys updates just because that can slightly affect temperatures on RAM. So the test just finished. I actually did have to revert to 6600 XMP because the RAM is actually getting way too hot. So I just ran XMP and as you can see, we're averaging about 47 degrees. So let's take a little look at the temperatures. So they average about max about 50-ish at this temperature at one point. 4 VDD, so that is the DRAM voltage on DDR5 1.4. Don't look at this little 63 because as you look, this is actually like a bug that you might notice with looking at DDR5. I don't know why it does it, but it is a bug. But as you can see, you know, 50C as you increase. So I was running about 1.57 VDD. That was running really hot. So now let's add the RAM fan and see what kind of temperatures we can get. RAM fan is in, as you can see, it's just kind of sitting above the RAM, pulling up. So it's just going to blow right onto the dims, and then extra air comes out through the P12s. Fan is running at max speed. Now, let's test in TM5. Okay, we have just finished the temperature testing with the fans. And as you can see, we are about 45C maxing out here. That is a lot, but as you see, 45C averaging about 41. So we did drop about 5 degrees Celsius here. The, the room is also about 1 degree hotter, so pretty good temperature decrease. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be using the hair dryer to remove the heat spreaders and seeing what kind of temperatures we can get with that. Let me explain the main reason behind why you actually want to remove the heat spreaders on this. So especially with G-Skill um, DDR5, one thing you'll notice is that the heat spreaders only cover the dyes themselves. So they only cover the dyes cooling them, which typically on like DDR4 and DDR3 was all you needed. But with DDR5, what they decided to do was they decided to add this PMIC right here in the middle. So this is what controls the memory. So this is like a VRM kind of for the memory. This gets very hot and especially on the G-Skill ones, this is not covered at all by a thermal pad. So typically people who are like water cooling in these, this is their biggest thing. They'll always put a thermal pad here. Cooling this down is what helps you achieve higher memory overclocks. This right here is what the temperature sensor is on. So when you're seeing 45, 50, whatever kind of temperatures, it is from this itself, not from the dyes themselves. And cooling this down has a significant benefit for memory overclocking. So now it is time to remove the heat spreader. So what we need is we have our RAM taken out of the PC, obviously. Now, I use a hair dryer for this. You can also use a heat gun, anything with heat. I've heard people do this with candles. That is stupid. Also, this is not a guide. If you break your RAM, not my fault. This voids all warranties. So if you break your RAM, it's all your fault. But basically what you do is you turn on the heat, get it really nice and hot. Basically, so you want these metal heat spreaders to be hot to touch. Then you want to take something plastic. Don't use metal. That's really stupid. So I use these plastic iFixit guitar picks. And I just slide it under. So I slide it under the heat spreader and just go really quick and easy. You want to make sure it's hot enough. And then once you start feeling pressure, take it out and start heating it up again. That means it's, you know, gotten cold. So I'm just gonna repeat that on this. You wanna do both sides as well. Now, the side with the actual DRAM modules, as you can see here, is a lot easier than the side without one. These use kind of like a thermal pad material, I believe, and not like tape, like the old DR4, but take my time with this. Literally gonna take forever to do this. And make sure you take your time. You don't wanna hurt anything. But now, time to remove the heat spreaders. 10 years later. And we are all done. So as you can see, here are the eight two gigabit, two gigabyte Highness 8i dies. And here's the PMIC. This is the main reason. As you can see, if we look here, it is not covered at all. Literally, you can actually see an input where two of the capacitors are showing. This actually kind of does worry me because this was not just on one stick. This was on both of them. So it makes me wonder if G-Skill is putting these on too tight and possibly that could cause an electrical short depending on what it's hitting. Maybe it's hitting like that and that maybe, something like that. And we're just pleasing the PC and then let's test them. Ram 6 are in and one unforeseen benefit for people who love RGB, it makes your RAM light up like a Christmas tree and light up basically your whole setup. So if you want some free RGB LEDs, there you go. A little extra, but actually, this is really big. I might need to find a way to disable those. It's RGB, just blinds me. Finished running TM5, so we ran TM5 heat spreaders removed and the RAM fan maxed out. And as you can see, RAM averaged probably about let's see, sorry, 
about 38 degrees. Now this one is a little bit hotter. This one's about 40. I believe this is because I didn't fully remove like the part on the other side where the ram dies aren't, making it slightly hotter where that's kind of like touching. But we lost probably about eight more degrees. So eight degrees from this, five degrees from just adding the fan. Dropped in total today, 13 degrees. Very good. If you like the content, hit that like button down below, subscribe, join the Discord. You can become a member there to support me, support me, allow to make more content. But hope you guys have enjoyed. Let me know what kind of RAM you have, if you've done this, if you're thinking about doing this, and what kind of overclocks you have on your RAM. See you guys later. Peace.